Raised garden beds are great for so many reasons. They can be made to any height, width or length, so you don't have to get down to the ground or lean over too far. And they can be positioned wherever you like to help suit what you want to grow. Raised beds can even be taken apart and removed, so they're perfect for anyone renting too. Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to build a practical raised garden bed for your outside space. There are a lot of different types of raised garden beds out there and they can be made from a range of materials in all shapes and sizes. But today I'm going to build our raised bed out of timber. I'm using timber because I love the look of it and in particular the look of mixed hardwood. It's natural, it's organic and it suits almost every garden. And it's the easiest to cut to the size and shape you're after. Treated pine sleepers are another popular option for raised garden beds. It is important to remember though, they are impregnated with all sorts of nasty chemicals to preserve the pine, which can in turn leach into your soil, then into your plants or your veggies. The tools I'll be using today are a drill, hex head, drill bits, extension lead, circular saw, tape measure, square, hammer, pencil, level, shovel, wheelbarrow, and safety gear. The timber sleepers I've chosen are 2.4 meters long by 200 millimeters wide and 50 millimeters thick. And the supports are 2.1 meters long by 125 millimeters wide and 75 millimeters thick. These are standard sizes you can find in most hardware stores. Now you need to choose where in your garden you want your raised bed to go. To help you decide, first consider what you want to grow, such as veggies, herbs, or flowers. Then look up how much sunlight, shade, and shelter they will need. Once you've chosen a spot for your raised bed, I suggest building it in the same location or as close to as possible. The timber's already really heavy, and once you screw it all together, it can be really difficult to move. Now for the size. I've decided that three sleepers higher is perfect for this area. This means it'll be around 600 mil off the ground, which is a really usable height. Next, measure out the width and length of the garden bed you want, and make sure you write down the sizes. Trust me. I've made plenty of mistakes by not doing this. Now it's time to start work. First, cut all your sleepers to size. If you don't have a saw or don't want to bother with the fuss, you can take your measurements to most hardware stores and they will cut the lengths for you. Grab your supports. These will go in each corner and in the middle of the long sides for extra strength. Because we are going to build 600 millimeters high, you'll need to cut your supports to 550 millimeters in length which is 50 millimetres shorter than the overall height. This way, the soil will cover and hide them. Now all your timber is cut, mock up one level of the bed. It's unlikely that you're going to have perfectly level ground, so if any adjustments are needed, make sure you dig an edge into the soil rather than propping one up. This way, no soil will wash out of the bottom of your bed and it looks much better too. While you've got the shovel out, remove any grass or weeds from inside the bed. Next, put the supports in each corner, plus one in the centre of each long side. Mark the centre of the supports on each sleeper. Then mark a line for pre-drilling and repeat on all sleepers. We only need to pre-drill the sleepers, not the supports. Pre-drilling is really important, and the reason we do this is to stop the timber from splitting. Now this next step, called countersinking, isn't completely necessary, but it does give a better looking finish. After all of your holes are pre-drilled, use a drill bit that is slightly bigger than the screw head and drill in around five to 10 millimeters. This is called countersinking, and it means the head of the screw is flush with the timber or slightly sunken in. This is the fun part. Once again, mock up the first level of your raised bed, making sure all ends are flush with each other, Put a support in the corner and get ready to screw everything together. When choosing your screw, make sure they are long enough to go all the way through the sleeper and still have enough length to screw well into the support. Always pick galvanized screws when using outdoors. This stops them from rusting. Now screw the sleepers into the supports. Finish the bottom level first, then the second, and finally the third. That's looking really good. The last step of the build is to line the inside walls with plastic sheeting. 
using galvanised tack nails or galvanised staples. This prevents the water and soil from leaking out between the sleepers and protects the timber from rot. If you do decide to use treated pine, this is a great way to separate the soil from the chemicals in the sleepers. Before we fill the bed, I always like to turn over the soil at the base a little. This can help with drainage and even encourage more worms to come up and help out. Next up, we've got to fill the bed with soil. I like to use a mix of 50% garden soil, 40% compost and 10% manure. Then plant it out with whatever your heart desires. Don't forget to put down some mulch to help hold moisture and prevent weeds. So there you have it, a beautiful looking, practical garden bed that'll produce for years and years to come. Happy gardening. If you enjoy getting out in the garden and want some more tips, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel up here or go and watch another video just here.